Hi everybody, Dr. Satterley here. Looking forward to seeing you on your first callback day. One of the things we're going to be doing on that first callback day is a hands-on session on clinical decision making and differential diagnosis. The more preparation you do for that session, the more you're going to, going to get out of it. And to that end, I've developed some uh, information for you that you can review and look at before we actually have that session. You don't have to submit anything before the session. You're not even required to look at this information. But I can assure you that if you do look it over, the callback day session will actually be more fun and much more useful to you. To that end, let's talk a little bit about clinical decision making and differential diagnosis. When I was a medical student, a very seasoned professor of mine used to say, if you don't know about it, you can't recognize it, and you can't think about it, and therefore you can't diagnose it. He used to also say that if you remain rigidly committed to one diagnosis before considering or ruling out others, you could miss the proper diagnosis and cause serious harm or even kill a patient. The longer I practice, the more I realize that truer words have never been spoken. And that's why I share this statement with you. Everything has a differential diagnosis. Even the lowly diagnosis of sinus infection has an implied differential. It looks like a sinus infection, but if the patient doesn't get better, or if new information makes you think otherwise, you have to consider other causes for the patient's presenting symptoms. Pharyngitis has a long differential. Bacterial pharyngitis, strep or non-strep, viral pharyngitis, Epstein-Barr virus, cytomegalovirus, both of which cause a mononucleosis syndrome, retropharyngeal abscess, peritonsillar abscess, allergies, even leukemia is in the differential of pharyngitis, right? Just to make a point, I list those. So when you see a patient and they present with a chief complaint, the more experience you get, the more you will begin to formulate your differential diagnosis even with that initial chief complaint. However, the important thing is not to let that initial impression bias you so that you too quickly exclude other possibilities for the cause of the patient's symptoms and findings. So it's important to formulate your differential diagnosis based on the chief complaint, based on the exam, based on any clinical data from workup and laboratory results, and also based on the clinical course if you happen to see the patient in follow-up, if it's a disease that is not uh, quickly resolved or self-limited. So what I'd like you to do in preparation for your callback day is take a look at the materials here, consider what I just mentioned, and um, also, consider participating in the optional Zoom chat that I will provide on this topic um, with a date to be announced. So check your email for that and work hard. Enjoy your learning process and stamp out disease wherever it rolls its ugly head. Peace to you. I'll see you soon.